The Sims 4 team led a two-hour live stream going over the new features of the Sims 4 Life and Death expansion pack. They did have all packs installed, so they were able to go over some cross-pack compatibility while doing the live stream. I watched it live when it came out earlier this morning, but I'm going to try to narrow down this video to the biggest features they talked about today. Starting off with wills, so when a sim dies, their will will be mailed to other sims who are being left something. Your sim will have the option to read the will in front of other sims or just one other sim. It comes into their inventory as like a letter and they can read the will and the other sims are supposed to have a reaction. In the live stream, the sim who got the will, she was an adult, read it in front of her daughter who was a child age sim. The daughter didn't react at all. But she also didn't have a high relationship with the deceased sim. So maybe that's why she didn't have a reaction. I thought that was kind of strange. But the the will itself comes up as a pop-up. So you can read the pop-up and then kind of act out what it's talking about. Wills can be written by attending the family day festival spe and speaking with an inheritance lawyer at the festival. Hiring an inheritance lawyer under the phone, via the phone under the services menu. Going to the city hall in Ravenwood and clicking that interaction or making it on the computer. Making a will could also be a bucket list item depending on your Sims traits and aspirations. So in the will, there's several parts you can choose to complete. You can choose heirlooms who they'll go to. You can choose dependents or pets if you want them to go to a certain household. Uh, which funeral activities does a cease sim would like everyone to participate in and what gravestone or urn to use. There's also the option to leave simoleons to other households or leave it to charity in increments of 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, or 100%. So when it comes to heirlooms, you can select to make an heirloom by clicking on an object and saying that this is your heirloom, or you can designate it through the creation of a will. Heirlooms can continually be passed down. So some you give your heirloom to a child, they grow up, they can give their heirloom to their child. So it seems like they want it to be like a multi-generational feature. They talked a little bit about the soul's journey. So soul's journey kind of ties in a bunch of different systems, including goals, traits, aspirations, lifestyles, you know, that kind of thing. Your sim can complete their bucket list goals to move through the soul's journey. So at first your sim may not have a, a lot of discovered goals, and that can be acquired just through gameplay. You also have the option to set goals yourself. So in the live stream, Summer had a goal of going on an unforgettable camping trip by spending the day in Granite Falls, which is cross-pack compatibility with those who have the outdoor retreat game pack. There's also the option to write your perfect goal, write your own goal, write a goal from a category, or completely scrap the bucket list if you want to start over. So in the live stream, they chose to write a goal from a category and there was nine categories to pick from. So the categories were, I want to get busy. I want to party. I want an adventure. I want success. I want a great family. I want to create. I want to travel or I want something else. So choosing from one of those categories means a random goal in that category will now be added to the bucket list. So the example they use in the live stream is they chose the I want to adventure category and it gave her a new goal of going on an interstellar adventure in Batu for those who have journey to Batu. So it's kind of interesting to see how that plays out. I want to see what some of the other categories are. Like I'm super curious that I want something else. Is that going to be something occult related, something otherworldly, or is it going to take you to a different menu? I mean, that they didn't really go into each category in, in depth. If you choose to write a perfect goal, the perfect goal is actually more tailored to your individual sim and where they are based on their traits, their personality, their career, or their household. So the sim in the live stream, her name was Summer. She already had a child, but she had a perfect goal of having another child. And that would only apply to her because some Sims who don't have any kids obviously couldn't have a perfect goal of having a second child because they don't have one. So I thought that that was really interesting and that stood out to me. I tend to stick to the same gameplay style when I play The Sims 4 and that's probably why I get bored of it. Um, this is definitely going to force you to play the game differently because if your Sim has that kind of trait like I want to go to Granite Falls, it's going to force you to either do it or pick another 
you know, aspiration or a bucket list item. She already had a lot of her bucket list done. I'm sure these goals are maybe age specific. Like I'm sure a child would have different bucket list goals than a young adult sim would. So I, they didn't really get into that so much. Um, this main sim summer, she also was a ghost historian, which is a new aspiration that came with this pack. And so she had a lot of tasks to complete to move up the ghost historian track. So it's four levels for this aspiration. Once you've hit level three, you unlock the ability to write horror novels. One of the tasks to complete level three of her aspiration was to interact with Edith. She's this random child ghost that haunts the well of longing and regret. And so I was kind of impressed by that. There's not just a tutorial aspiration, but there's actually some, your sim is required to explore both the ghost and the lore of Ravenwood in order to complete some of these challenges. Again, it's going to make you switch up your gameplay style and, and kind of change up your sims lives. Like you have to go out and do these things. They also showed off a lot of the world of Ravenwood and we bumped into the mysterious merchant, which is some sort of like NPC character that wanders around community spaces. He sells mysterious items, which I think are souls that can help you if you're in the active Grim Reaper career. Um, you can buy wares, you can ask about the mysterious items, or you can purchase an authentic pre-made will. Not really sure what the story is behind those. Um, they didn't really get too deep into that. Uh, the active Grim career is very thorough. You actually get to work with Grim and have a relationship with him and other Sims in this active career lot that you can actually travel to. It's not a hidden lot in the game. You use the Scribal to get different assignments and those lead you to different events. So you travel to this event and before you can reap the souls, you're supposed to investigate the cause of death and make a determination of how they died before reaping any souls if they're already dead when you get there. There's supposed to be different types of activities and events and opportunities where a sim can plead for their life while you're out on the challenge. So they did address that, that if you bump into characters that you actually care about. So if you don't just get an assignment with random NPC sims, but it's an actual sim that you've played through or want to keep in your game, you can choose to spare them. You don't have to reap them. It'll just affect your like quota you know, for your task for the day. When a sim is being reaped and you're not in the active grim career, just, you know, playing normally, sims can plead for their life. But there's also an option now to challenge grim to spare their life. So you can challenge grim in some different games. And there is some cross pack compatibility there. So if you have chess, which came with the base game, hopscotch, which is from the four rent expansion pack and basketball, if you have the city living expansion pack, you can challenge grim to one of those games. Living Sims who want to temporarily become a ghost can swim in this pond and have an out-of-body experience, but if they do it too much, it will make them turn into a ghost permanently. So I touched on a lot about ghosts. So ghosts can be added to your household by clicking on the urn of a deceased Sim, creating one and create a Sim, or choosing to play your Sim as a playable ghost after they pass away. So it just kind of depends on what you want to do. There's so much flexibility with that. And then ghosts themselves, they have their own type of specific needs and their own skill tree. So ghosts who have unlocked the transcended woohoo are able to woohoo with living sims in any piece of furniture in the house, like couches, televisions, refrigerators. There's also an option in the social menu under relationship to ask to stay married because sims who pass away when they're married will now have the widowed relationship type they won't just automatically be single or or married ghosts who unlock the rebirth ability can swim in the pond to undergo the rebirth and select which household they want to be reborn into which age group do they want to come back as an occult like there's so much flexibility with it, it was actually really interesting and they showed off a little bit of the ghostly cow plant as well they talked about tarot cards and that is a part of a quest that came in the game itself so there are four local townspeople who have specific quests for you to complete one of the townspeople is nervous subject they called him a different name now he's not called nervous subject in the sims 4 but he is the child of olive specter and the grim reaper which follows the lore of the sims 4 so if you complete the four quests from these four townies they can give you advanced tarot cards which have their own specific gameplay per card 
There's 26 cards to collect all together, and you can get hints um, in the collections menu if you want to figure out like how to get those cards. There's also a basic set of tarot cards in build by mode if you don't want to do these tasks. So I'm not really sure what the difference is between the two, but I'm assuming there's more gameplay if you collect the cards. Um, they had another group of sim gurus go over the create a sim and the build by modes. I wasn't super impressed with build by. It's not my style of architecture. I think it's very niche and kind of plays more to this world, specifically Ravenwood. Some pieces would work for cottage living, maybe, but I don't think it would assimilate into just every part of all the worlds. It's kind of a specific style, that rundown, rustic style, and more gothic. It's like, uh, it doesn't really fit everywhere. Um, and of course, I like to create a sim for female sims, but I wasn't impressed for male sims. I just seem like that's something the Sims team is going to just always struggle with. They don't know what to do with male Sims for hairstyles, but also for clothing. It's just never quite right. Like they're, they're trying and it's not that the quality is bad. It's not that it's low poly or anything like that, but it's just never fashionable. The Sims just never look. They just look not into in like they don't look like they're 2024. They look out of time or something. Which may have also been because of the theme of this pack, but it's just, I don't know. I want better build by for male sims. Or better cast, I'm sorry, for male sims. Um, overall, though, I see the game has a lot. This expansion pack has a lot of promise. There seems to be a lot of gameplay with the wills and the funerals and the active grim career and playable ghosts, exploring the lore of Ravenwood, the collectible tarot cards, and just trying to complete the bucket list for each stage of life and completing the soul's journey. It's nice that they're trying to tie in all of the systems for once because there are a ton of systems in The Sims 4. We would get one with an expansion pack and then it would never be built upon again. So I'm thinking about like sentiments, which came with Snowy Living. We rarely get new sentiments. It doesn't come up very often. You know, so to tie in what all of the things our Sim cares about and make it relevant to make the Sims feel more alive and smart and emotional kind of is a nice feature. There's also a lot of things that they didn't have time to show us, but they did mention. So they mentioned the various festivals that take place throughout Ravenwood. We didn't actually get to see any of those festivals, like the family day festival. We didn't get to see it. Um, they also mentioned the afterlife anonymous meetings for ghosts. We didn't get to see that. The rabbit hole career, the mortician career. We didn't get to see it. Um, there were certain rewards, I guess, you get as you unlock and level up through the active Grim Reaper career. I think they showed one, which was like a box or something, but they didn't really go into it. Um, we heard about tarot card readings, but didn't really get to see that in action. So I feel like there was a lot more gameplay than what we saw in the trailers, the three trailers that we got previous to this live stream. And even with the two-hour live stream, which over an hour of it, was just gameplay. We still didn't get to see everything. And with this game, like I said, they had all the packs installed. It wasn't overly glitchy. I don't think I noticed anything that was like, oh, they're stuck here or this didn't work the way they thought. They didn't have to like cut away to something because it wasn't working right or it actually ran pretty smooth, which I was impressed by. The only thing I will say is I didn't see emotional reactions. Um, but like I said earlier, the child Sim who had no response to being read her grandmother's will, even though she wasn't left anything in the will either. So maybe that's why she didn't respond. But when they had an in-game funeral that they planned, I expected to see more sadness, more crying, different sort of emotional responses. And I didn't. It seemed very neutral. Um, so I'm not quite sure what that's about because I thought that was kind of the point. Funerals was one of the biggest selling points in the pack and i don't know the sims just didn't really seem to care very much about that um so i don't know if that's a deal breaker for you but for me i don't think it's a deal breaker i don't know how many funerals i'll actually plan just like with my wedding stories i planned maybe a couple of weddings when the pack first came out and then i like never planned weddings again now to be fair the weddings also didn't work and they still don't work um but I, it's not a crux for me I may plan two funerals and then like never do a funeral again. And especially now that I know funerals are not tied to the will, like the will just comes in the mail for your sim. So rather you do a funeral or not, you can still get the inheritance and stuff. 
I mean, I do it that often. It just really depends. Um, I haven't noticed any EA Game Changers posting early access content, so either they don't have access to the game yet or they're waiting for the embargo to lift in order to post more. Because I still want to see how they get to interact with the game. Is it as smooth as the live stream was? But I would say this is one of the safer expansion packs to buy on launch. It seems like it's rich in gameplay. It seems like it's not going to be glitchy. I like the overall theme, even though funerals themselves seem to be pretty uneventful. I'm really attracted to the soul's journey. For me, I think that's the biggest selling point of the pack is I want to see how this enriches my Sims lives. Systems that change the day-to-day Sims lives is what makes replayability and what makes the Sims the Sims. How well can I get my Sim from, you know, newborn to death and complete all of the things they want to do and finish their aspiration? And, you know, I want to see how that plays out. That's the gameplay I'm looking for. Um, Of course, though, there's never a reason to pre-order any pack. (laughs) You can still get the pre-order items up until December 12th. So you don't have to buy them in advance to get the three items. I think it was one was like a makeup and something, two other like build buy items. You don't have to pre-order to get those. And we want EA to know that you need to give us fully functioning packs that work and that are fun for us to buy them. So you won't be able to know that if you pre-order it. And so for that reason, I would say no to pre-ordering. But I would say, yes, this is a game one. Get you know get this packed on the first day if you can. Let me know in the comments below. What did you think of the live stream?